Hi, this is Jimmy the Fontmeister, and today I want to talk about ligatures. Ligatures are two characters that have been combined into one. Some standard ligatures that you're used to seeing are like FI, FL, FF, FFI, FFL, AE, OE. You may not be aware that the ampersand that I've selected here is actually uh, something that developed a long time ago. It's a kind of an abbreviation of the word et, which in Latin means end. So therefore we ended up with the ampersand. So it's kind of a stylized ligature as well. But the kind of ligatures I want to talk about are the kind that are uh, understood by your typical applications like uh, Oh, Adobe Illustrator and InDesign and Quark and things like that. So you might think about how ligatures can be used to improve the appearance of characters because sometimes um, kerning just doesn't do it and there's two characters that just don't look good together. And also it was developed as a way uh, to kind of imitate the old old-fashioned uh, fonts from a long time ago. So I want to say right here that there are people who make their own ligatures and these are called discretionary ligatures and they would be the combination of some letters that are not typically expected by any known encoding table. So in that case you're going to have to make an open type font and you're going to have to do some actual uh, coding uh, in something like uh, FontLab Studio in order to create uh, discretionary ligatures. So we're just specifically talking about plain old ligatures and this is a quick start version so we're going to do everything the easy way. So if I had an assignment to create a font with ligatures I would go to Element, Font Info. I would choose Adobe Standard Encoding because as soon as you do that then the encoding is going to pop up the way Adobe has it arranged and look at here you see that Adobe encoding has ligatures. The reason I'm trying to emphasize this is because there are encodings in the world that do not have ligatures and then you do be back to making your own in FontLab Studio uh, in an open type font. So let's stick with the easy way. We're going to find an encoding that has ligatures we're going to draw some characters and put them in the slots where the ligatures are expected to be. And then all we got to do from there is to uh, generate and install the font. So let's take a look at how this looks in Adobe Illustrator. If I've got a font with ligatures, when I want to type a ligature, I just type FI. And it automatically knows that you have ligatures turned on in your preferences so you must want the FI ligature. If you had ligatures turned off you'd get an F and an I uh, just you know without a ligature. Now in Creative Studio you'll find uh, in Illustrator that uh, you go to the character paragraph open type panel and here you see the little icon here for standard ligatures and here is the icon for discretionary ligatures that you made up on your own. And you'll find uh, similar preferences in other applications like InDesign. Um, I guess to summarize, you know, you could create a, a glyph which you put in any slot. Like let's say here you didn't need the uh, Japanese yen. You could put a ligature in there. And you could generate any kind of font you wanted and you um, would not have to use uh, an encoding vector that had ligatures. But then what you're going to have to do is to know the keystroke in order to uh, type that manually in some application. So there are some applications that don't automatically search for ligatures. And also be aware that some applications will also substitute characters from another font when they can't find the ligature. So I hope that kind of gets you introduced to the world of ligatures. And uh, I, I guess I would say if you'd stick with something like Adobe Encoding, you could have a, a very easy path uh, for 
creating ligatures and then just uh, maybe at some point you'll be ready to delve into the world of uh, fancier ligatures using Font Lab Studio. But as far as Photographer, this should get you started on making ligatures. Thank you for watching the Photographer tutorial series and as always check your manual for more details and let us know if there's some other topics you'd like to see covered in this series.